Well, this video is a bit different for my channel. It's a day in the life of an artist. My daughter-in-law was in town a while back and she saw, she couldn't believe how hard I worked as an artist. So she said, why don't I just film you all day and you can make a video showing other people what you do in the studio behind the scenes. So welcome and I hope you enjoy this presentation. So my day usually starts at the crack of dawn. I love getting up early, of course, getting a cup of coffee. It is Monet Cafe, right? And I absolutely love taking a walk outside. I see my little sweet kitty, Lucille. Oh, what a faithful kitty she's been with us through floods and tragedies. And uh, But you know, it's a quaint and simple place that we live but there's just beauty everywhere. I don't care what corner of the world you're in, we can find some beauty around us. And I love the little uh, road by the cow pasture next door to our property. The cows aren't mine, but I feel like they're mine and I love visiting them. And I love snapping some shots and uh, getting some inspiration to start the day. And this is the little farmhouse that we renovated after the flooding of our home. It's still not our permanent home, but I've set up shop in that little corner on the back of the house right there. We do live on a very busy road, so it's a little noisy, but we make it work. And uh, we're still not finished. The back porch isn't even finished. And on this particular day, I was working from my dining room table because my studio was such a mess from so many other projects. And on this particular date and time, I was working on a project for my Patreon page, uh, a project called 12 Days of Healing. It was right in the midst of the whole COVID-19 pandemic, which I'm actually, we're still kind of in right now. Uh, but this is my, like, again, my quaint little farmhouse. And um, this is my studio, just a 10 by 13 room that I actually have a video on when I was designing this studio. And I do have to focus on staying very organized since the studio is so small. But oh, look at that view out my window. I do have that great view. Um, but I know a lot of you guys can relate to that. Many of you are doing what I used to do, working just from a kitchen table or in the corner of a dining room, you know, wherever you can find. So uh, so once again, I'm, I'm just kind of giving you a brief little tour of things. I have a lot of shelves to hold artwork and uh, lots of different ways that I store pastel artwork and uh, I have a lot of videos on sharing practical ways to keep up and manage this beautiful addiction that we have as artists. Uh, again, look at that beautiful pink sky out my window. So again, a quick little tour of the studio. This is usually how I start my day. Well, not giving a tour, <laughs> but um, just getting started early in the mornings. And uh, for much of this video, you will see my uh, the footage from my daughter-in-law who was filming me throughout this day. And it gives a lot of behind the scenes tips and things I don't normally share in my videos. So hope you enjoy doing now Susan oh wait first of all first of all I gotta brush my hair I am <laughs> time to get to work all right so after making breakfast having my coffee it's time to get the day started all right time to get this painting uh, I got a good photo of it already uh, needs to be uploaded to social media and um, also to sites where I sell prints and uh, the video has got to be made of the process to share on my Patreon page, Facebook, and Instagram, and um, other site, YouTube. It's got to go on YouTube. All right, let's get this painting stored and put away. Maybe you can show how much I have to move to even do anything. Pastels everywhere. What I'm doing now is actually, I'm speeding this up, of course. You guys don't want to see the slow version of this. Is I'm cutting my, um, trimming my painting uh, that I had done on a larger piece of pastel mat. And I know I can still use the other side of that. So I'm cutting it. I'll have... Um, you know, a little bit of the uh, surface to use for another painting and just getting it trimmed. And I like to trim it so that I'm not so tight on the edges, giving um, some flexibility with framing. And, uh, and then I'll temporarily store this typically until I have enough paintings to do more permanent storage. Notebook system, I'm storing my pastels. Some of them aren't adhered yet. 
And actually, for the little painting that I had finished, I, I had forgotten I, I was displaying them all, all 12 of them, before I do the temporary storage um, for my Patreon page. And we were all doing 12 days of painting consecutively, and it was a lot of fun. And here's a quick little flip through of the notebook. And basically, this system just works well for me practically so that I have a temporary storage place before I store them more permanently in clear bags. And I have videos on that whole process as well. And uh, now it's time to do more with the painting that I finished today. Very quickly, I'm just showing here the actual clear bags that I use. I now order from a company called clearbags.com. Super easy to find them. And again, I have videos on the whole process. I usually cut a piece of foam core board, just a little bit smaller than the painting. I include it behind the painting in the clear bag. I'm explaining here how I move things from my temporary storage to my clear bags. And it's a pretty good system. I like it. Now, of course, a very important part of this so that the art gets to you guys and people in the uh, online social media world is to get a good photo of your artwork. And uh, I used to use a Canon uh, SLR camera that I liked a lot until I got this awesome new iPhone Pro Max, 11 Pro Max uh, camera that was actually possible because of my patrons support uh, from my Patreon page. So thank you guys. And this awesome light, my ring light, which makes it great for, uh, for getting good lighting. Um, now I'm going to make another video on some photography tips for you guys to get good um, little, little tips and tricks and simple things that you can do to get better images of your artwork. But for now, I just thought you guys might like to see the behind the scenes of sometimes how I get my, uh, my images. Also, natural lighting is one of the best lighting sources to use. All right, so now once I get a good uh, photo, it's time to upload it to the computer. Okay, so the next thing to do after you get a photo of your artwork is to, I get in here and I do a lot of tweaking. There's all these different things you can do with regards to brightness, contrast, levels, curves, exposure. Don't be intimidated by all that in Photoshop. All this stuff is very learnable. And then I crop it. Um, before the crop, it looked like this. So um, I go in and I, I crop the image. And um, then once I get the image as close to what I see the original image like, it's time to save this image and share it on all the different social medias. You guys know all about that. You've got to share it on Instagram. You've got to share it on Facebook and in Facebook, um, you know, as an artist, it's best to go ahead and share it in all the places that's going to get you the most exposure. So in Facebook, you may have your own art page, which I do, The Art of Susan Jenkins, different art groups that you're in, maybe your own personal uh, profile page on Facebook, um, and then also share it on Instagram with all the appropriate hashtags, maybe create a story from it, um, share it on uh, my Patreon page, or um, um, actually the next process will be making the video. Uh, and all of this happens with just one painting. It, it begins with the painting and recording it for the video, uh, and it ends with getting it all shared, the video and the photo to everything. And then I'll also share it sometimes to um, my sites that make prints and products. Sometimes I'll make a blog post out of the painting and um, Oh my gosh, too many other things to mention that I had to literally make a sheet up here that goes through all of the different processes that a, a painting goes through um, to get it out into the public. So as you can see now in my day, it's uh, almost 10 o'clock and I've already been up painting. Uh, I've made breakfast for my husband. Uh, I've been outside, got some good photos, read my Bible, get some good inspiration outdoors. It's a beautiful day today. And uh, it's still time to get to work. <laughs> I've got to now, I will begin, now that I've gotten a good image of, or a uh, high resolution image of the painting, I'm gonna start uh, editing the video and uh, getting all of that ready to share with the artistic world. I also thought it might be nice if I share with you how I store my paintings in the virtual world. Not only do you have to store them physically in some sort of system, I have to keep them on my computer in a easy way to find them again and to categorize them. So uh, this might help you guys a little bit in knowing how I do that. So here's what I do. I save it. I have an art folder and then I have a painting folder. Uh, you want to have a good system on your computer or system in general of keeping your paintings organized. And then I can actually go into that folder um, 
and uh, go to this painting and go to uh, get info. And uh, it'll have the date that I uploaded it and everything on here. Where's the date created? Um, but I can add anything else I would like to in the comments. I can add, uh, for example, the pastels that I use for this. I'll probably remember, but um, this is a great little section for you to include extra information about your painting. Um, so that if somebody buys it, you know, maybe you can tell them, oh, this was when I was uh, at this particular place or, you know, it's kind of neat to have more, more information, the better. All right. Which, uh, how many cup of, cups of coffee did you have? <laughs> oh, I've already had two <laughs> early this morning and then while I was painting and now definitely time for another cup of coffee. Mm. While I still have yet to create a video from the painting I completed that morning, I knew I needed to go ahead and get ahead of myself and do another one of the small paintings I was doing in the 12 Days of Healing Challenge. So now I'm just looking at reference images to get inspired and to begin my next painting. All right, so it's 1.57. Okay. We just had lunch. Yep, got to put the hair up. It's something I've just had to remember to do because I've had too many videos where I have these little hairs in front of the painting. All right, now it's officially time to get started. <laughs> and Jackson is ready too. Oh, Jackson, yeah, he's ready. And now the process of yet another painting starts. And of course I'm recording it and this actual video is on the Monet Cafe YouTube channel. So you can see the entire video and the finished painting on that video. Uh, but again, it's just another part of the day. And uh, after this painting, it's time to do some prep work for family coming over. All right, so tell us a little bit about what's going on now after you're done, sort of, with your painting. <laughs> Time for the art apron to become a cooking apron. <laughs> I'm defrosting chicken. Hot season. <laughs> Cleaning the furniture from. <laughs> Can any other pastel artist relate to this? You get pastel dust everywhere. Um, the worst is my light switch in my art studio. Let's go see if it's dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that one too. No, that was, oh, there's some pastel little, dust huh? on the wall. <laughs> it's when you try, no, it's not too bad actually. I can't believe it. I probably cleaned it already, but this is usually covered in pastel dust. Mm. I did have something What's gonna else. happen now after you're done cooking? Um, it's two, no, three o'clock. Three o'clock, um, oh, what are you doing next? I definitely need to um, edit the video uh, and upload it. The, the painting that I, started yesterday and I finished this morning. Uh, I have all of the footage. I've, I think I've already, I'm not even sure if I've uh, uh, airdropped it from my phone to my computer, but I have to do that, uh, edit it uh, in iMovie and um, then upload it, which all of that takes hour, a couple hours at least, and then upload it to YouTube and share it everywhere on social media. So gotta get to that. And then I'll need to finish that painting and do the same thing all over again. <laughs> While you're cooking, mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit of the reason why you decided to make this video with, you know, behind the well, scene, sort of, you know, showing how it is to be an artist and also live the rest of your life and cook and do well, all the... Well, I actually didn't think about it until you recommended mm -hmm. it, which, but then I thought, you know, that's a great idea because I have a tendency to just show all of the art stuff and also it's hard to film myself. I, I'm busy and so it's very sweet of you to do this. And then I realized too, uh, I think other artists or uh, aspiring artists would like to see behind the scenes and how you often do have to just, it's not like you just go to a studio, paint, you get it all done and come home. Often you have to multitask and do a lot of stuff all at the same time like I do, especially if your studio is in the house like mine, which is very convenient because I can still do all the things I normally do, but it's a juggling act, that's for sure. So, but I, I'm thankful for this video because I think a lot of um, artists will uh, appreciate seeing what it takes. And it's mm -hmm. a lot, it really is a lot. Some of them, yeah, I don't think they know exactly that you have to leave your life, do the errands, cook, and take I, care of yourself exactly, while you do all this. Exactly, and I even look at other artists now with new eyes because of what I have to do. I see the artists like Marla Baguetta the other day who just did a live video presentation, and I watch her and as flawless and as wonderful as it all seems, I know what some of the things that she had to do behind the scenes 
it doesn't just come together. And I think, another, I think another thing artists would appreciate is we have a tendency to maybe idolize some people who are doing this and not realize that they have the same struggles, the same sometimes insecurities about art, and uh, and it's a lot of work. It doesn't just happen like you see on the video all the time. There's many paintings you never see, <laughs> mm -hmm. and that's with all artists. You know, that's not just me. That's a lot. Often forget to do and something I don't like to do is sign my paintings. I know that sounds kind of silly but I'm left-handed and I write like this. Uh, I don't paint like that <laughs> but just to do my my that's why I do my initials just to do my initials is uh, sometimes a little challenging but I make it as simple as possible. All right with that done let's get this one ready to photograph. And do the same thing all over again. So here we go with the same process again. And, you know, it may seem like, wow, don't you just get tired of doing all of this? But, hey, it's awesome to be an artist. It is a lot of work. But if you love it and you're a creative person and you're getting to do the thing that you love, all of the other extra effort and work is so worth it. So I don't discourage, this video is not meant to be a discouragement, I should say, um, and uh, I hope I don't scare any artist away, but um, I will say a lot of the things that have helped me and blessed me have come in handy with my channel and my art business is uh, the fact that I majored in graphic design, knowing some of the things about computer, and computer editing, and Photoshop, and I happen to love movies movie editing, so uh, that all adds into uh, some of the fun and and actually a real benefit. Right, so we're going to go through the process of editing a video and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about what programs you use. and. Okay, while, this, um, while these files are uploading for the painting that I just did, I actually, I still have to upload the files from the painting I finished this morning, but while it's uploading, um, let me show you the program that I use. I use iMovie. There are other um, computer, that's when I gave all my patrons a message. There are other computer uh, programs you can use, um, such as Final Cut, uh, that are really uh, super editing programs. But you know, iMovie is awesome. It's really all that you need, uh, or all that I need. Every video I've ever done has been with uh, iMovie. And so it's really not all that hard. I'll, I'll show you just how easy it is. When you have an empty um, iMovie film strip here, that's just empty, no no clips are in it, I literally just go to my finder, my little finder guy, I go to my desktop, I go to um, my folder that would have my video, like, well, right now it's these, let's just go ahead and do these, since they're right now, they popped up from my download folder. Um, you highlight all the ones you want, and you can do them individually, you don't have to do them all as a group. And you just drag them down into iMovie. And uh, because I do voiceovers, I almost, the reason I do voiceovers, I've shared this many times, is my house is often very active. I can't count on it being quiet for me to talk. And it's so small that you hear everything. So it's just become easier for me to just paint and then do the voiceover when I can find that time. So I always go in and take the sound down on every single clip. And then I do a voiceover. So when I start to edit this video, um, I, you know, guys, I often too put an intro uh, picture at the beginning. Uh, this one's not touched up yet in Photoshop, but what I would do is I would put this at the beginning. And um, right now it's it's not cropped right, so I can make it go where I want it to go. I could start it here, and then end it uh, down here like that. And then now when I play it, it will play like that. That's not too bad, actually. And then I can add a title to it if I want. Right here, I can say uh, painting while doing everything. Mm. How about that? <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so blah, blah, blah. And then um, you can do different things with this, too. You can, um, you can change the font. You can, this has a little outline on it right now. I don't really like that outline, so I take it away. I could, uh, sometimes I use this kind of fun font, right? Oh, that's too big though. I'll pick, here's another one I like. Let's see, that one, yeah. Um, and then uh, I can add the music. I go to another file where I go to my documents, to art, to Monet Cafe, 
to YouTube Music because you cannot use music that has a copyright. YouTube has all these little music files that I know I'm safe with. I don't often go and buy other songs or try other things. So if that song sounds good. Um, I'll put it down here. And then all of a sudden, we have the beginning to a video. And I can, here, I'll do it big screen so you can see. We can play it and go big screen. And there's your movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do have more editing to do though. So now what I'll be doing is just clipping this up, um, making sure there's not wasted time. I try to look out for you guys. I, I give you what I think might interest you, but there's no sense in boring you with me kind of looking for pastel, you know, or whatever. So this should be a fun video. I can't wait to make it for you. And I gotta make that other one too. Mm -hmm. so, and then we gotta have dinner. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna look at the time. It's uh, 3.27 right now. I now I thought this was interesting. We set up my iPhone on um, time-lapse mode so you could see the whole editing process of one video done in just a few seconds. So it is a lot of work. I don't mean to discourage anyone if you'd like to start a YouTube channel, but I'll let you know it is definitely a lot of work and it definitely helps to have some of the knowledge of computer or movie editing and um, software programs. So to have a successful channel. All right, so it took you exactly 30 minutes. Oh, to edit that little video? Yeah, it's and four o'clock. In what's interesting is that was a video that I decided to do a little speed video just for the YouTube channel. I still have to go back and edit this video now for my patrons. I usually do it in the opposite order. I make the patron first and then the other one. But I, I thought I'd go ahead and do the speed one. So I still have to make another voiceover longer editing for my patrons because they're worth it. Um, but now I have to upload this, uh, condense it first with a program that I use, upload it to YouTube, and then share it all over the place. So I got about 30 minutes to do that, I guess. So I better get busy. Right, so I see that you have here a computer, a Mac computer, and also you're using a different screen. Yes, Why yes. is that? This is the MacBook Pro. It's the, I guess you could call it the Mac Daddy Mac. It's got a, um, a lot of storage on it. It's very fast. Um, it has a, a good processor and a lot of RAM, 16 gig of RAM. Um, but uh, I needed the extra space. But also, too, it's got a nice size. I think this is the... This is this a 17-inch monitor? I'm not positive on that, but um, it didn't matter to me. I mean, I really probably could have gotten a smaller monitor uh, or, or screen, I should say, viewing screen. But I know I have this um, large HP monitor. I don't remember the model number. I got it at Costco for about $200. And it just makes it so much easier for me to see my paintings. Uh, the resolution is really good. So it's a really awesome way for me to work rather than just, I mean, look at that difference. I mean, even you can see this looks more faded out than this monitor, you know, mm -hmm. so this is really good. And, um, you know, being it, uh, that it is a artistic type of thing that I'm editing, I need the screen to be right and I need to be able to see it good. So that's why I decided to get a large monitor. It's really great. And this way you got the different uh, keyboard and the mouse An and everything so you don't have to... Tube. Yes, it's just easier. I, you know, I've uh, been using this system for so long. Also, too, my, my laptop computer doesn't fit here as good. It fits up here better. And also, too, when you buy the new MacBook Pro, they don't have any external ports. They don't even have... My old Mac used to have a, uh, an HD card port. The new Macs, just so you know, if you're thinking of getting one... Um, you're gonna have to get one of these external things if you have external things to plug into it. Um, it's uh, an adapter, basically. And I have to plug this into my Mac and then all of these other things, my microphone, my monitor, um, even the little thing for my mouse and my keyboard goes in here. Um, so it's, uh, it's doing a lot. <laughs> it's a very uh, um, busy computer right now. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, so this system really does work for me quite well. I'm a granite. I do like this one. Watermelon is also very good. So if you want to make um, a gift for Susan, Starbucks gift cards mm -hmm. and flowers. I don't know why I mentioned this with the sparkling water. Dick Blick Art Supplies. Art Supplies. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is good. And of course, the day would not be complete without at least three or four sessions of playing catch with Jackson, my little sidekick art studio mascot. You know, it's funny, I'm throwing with my left arm. I'm not left-handed in sports, I am in painting, but I have a rotator cuff injury in my right shoulder and 
man, it bums me not being able to throw the ball really well. All right, back to work. Okay, I'm just getting ready for dinner. Family coming over. While I still have plenty of work to do with movie editing, you know, processing, uploading, all of that good stuff, I knew I better get my dining room cleared out for my family coming over later. And, uh, you know, that's the challenge when your dining room table doubles as your art table. <laughs> and you and me, so happy together. Hey. All right, it is 5.26. And you finally uploaded the video online. What's next? Yes, I got the video uploaded um, called "Let's Paint a Poppy Field." In, in case you want, they want to search it, huh? Oh yeah, let me um, let me refresh it so we get to the or let me start it at the beginning. This is called "Let's Paint a Poppy Field in Soft Pastel." Right. So there's a lot more benefits to be a patron instead of just a follower. And yeah. we talked about some competitions and awards and stuff, prizes that you give to your patrons. Yes. Can you tell us more? Why is it more beneficial to be a patron? What What do you get exclusively on your Patreon page? That's a great in question. To other? You know, originally it started out, I wasn't even gonna start a Patreon page because I knew how much work all of this requires. And I know the type of person I am. I wouldn't want somebody paying extra to me unless I was providing them more. The beautiful thing is that so many of the patrons are literally just paying for the support of it. I know that. I can tell that you just have a good heart. You know how much I put into Monet Cafe, but I still want to provide more. So what I do for my patrons is um, I would say more than 50% of the time, I create a video that has more content for my patrons. This particular one is on both. Um, you get more uh, voiceovers, uh, you get more real time in the video footage, uh, you get the reference image um, almost always to work from, and um, I also have contests. Uh, I'm doing a contest right now that has to do with the 12 days of healing. I've done contests where I gave away original paintings. I've done that I think three times where someone got one of my original paintings. Uh, I'm going to be having some contests to give away the Monet Cafe bracelet. I'm not wearing that one today. Um, and also you get access to my, my special group on Facebook for my patrons. It's called Susan Jenkins Patreon group. So that's where well, you can only access it if you're a patron. If you're a patron, so. it's a private group. So only my patrons can be in that group. And when you're in that group, you can share with my other patrons. I'm in there. I, I share all my videos, but you can get that from the Patreon page, but you can com communicate with each other. You can ask me more questions. I'm involved with that more than the Monet Cafe group because that group that I started because of the Monet Cafe channel has almost 10,000 members in it. It's a beautiful group, it's wonderful, and everybody's helping each other, but it's harder for me to see your painting. If you're one of my patrons, I can give you a little bit more attention, you can ask me more questions. Um, and you I, often advise, uh, you're exactly. able to give more advice. Exactly, It's again, it's a little bit more intimate. Uh, I'm now gonna be starting, oh, before that, also too, there's some patrons who aren't on Facebook. So I'm now starting these Google albums where when I have a, a thing like my 12 days of healing, we can all put our photos in the Google album. So even if you're not on Facebook, I have ways that you can share together. So, um, but my patrons really, I say it all the time, they bless me so much just to think that you guys are supporting me. It's, I, I just, it's so beautiful to me. So anyway, but yeah, patrons, it's a special group, uh, special people, and they do get which is good. <laughs> this is actually me going through some of my patrons' artwork in the Google album, something I love to do. And doing what is really, I love doing this. I mean, it's another time consuming thing, but it's a blessing to me. Now I'm just going through on my Patreon page, specifically the shared Google album and my Patreon group in Facebook, where I can see what my patrons post and what they're doing. And I'm really loving seeing all of the paintings from the 12 Days of Healing. Uh, and I love when I scroll down and I see new new posts, what people have posted. Um, Gisela just posted a new little piggy painting. Oh my gosh, these flowers from Bonnie. Uh, she did the pot of flowers. Uh, we've got Brigitte, Bridget, Brigitte, um, painted from the beach scene. Kara did the uh, marsh scene. Linda did the there. pear. So once I wrap that up, um, I love to communicate with you guys. Um, then I think I'm gonna finish for the day 
uh, but I still didn't get one of the videos uploaded. So tomorrow I got to get back at it again to upload the video of the painting I did yesterday actually, and then do another painting and start this whole day process all over again. But for now, I'm going to go make dinner and enjoy my family. You guys, right, so we went through three different kinds of drinks. We went from coffee <laughs> to water, vitamin water, sparkling water, and now it's 5.45 and I we just switched time. Yes, to a glass okay. of wine, huh? A little more. Now I have three kinds. Yes, she has three kinds because mm -hmm. we went to the end of two other bottles. All right, mm -hmm. cheers, Monet Cafe. End of a long okay. day. Cheers, Bing. And uh, maybe we'll record some more of dinner. Family's coming over for dinner. Meet the family. Yeah, we have to conclude the day somehow. That's so, right. yes. Okay. Shirt sure, down. Let me say something serious. This is uh, one of my best pieces of art right here. I have three of them that are my favorite pieces. That's of my art. Bryson, who's actually married to the voice you're hearing behind the camera, Sweet Lorena, my daughter in law, who's been recording this to make this video. My son met her during a mission trip to Romania. Talk about a long distance relationship. She got a scholarship to the States for her piano skills and she is just a beautiful soul, such a sweet believer in the Lord. And she's an artist too. Look at these lovely paintings. She has a real talent for painting small. I'm amazed at what she can create on such a tiny little surface. So I just wanted to thank her for the idea and the work to put this together. So after that long day, we were able to have a little family time with some good food, fellowship, and uh, I am just more blessed than I can express. And of course, there's my sweet husband, Todd, who is, he says he's fighting the coronavirus, <laughs> who puts up with all my crazy art career that I love to share with all of you. So the day usually ends exactly where it started, out by the cow pasture, checking on my cow friends, and of course seeing my favorite cow, Oreo, who is often a painting subject of mine and a real blessing to my life. So I hope you guys enjoyed this behind the scenes day in the life of an artist. Now it's time for me to get back to the easel. As always friends, happy and blessed painting.